Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, good morning, guys. What's going on? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. That's theblackfinancialchannel.com. Uh, if you want to get uh, financial news and commentary from a black perspective on a daily basis, make sure you subscribe at theblackfinancialchannel.com. Um, today is a really big day. Uh, today is an amazing day, actually. Um, the stock market is uh, just absolutely uh, bonkers today. Um, today, a lot of people made a lot of money. Uh, and that's after they were already making a ton of money um, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, the market is just uh, kind of out of control right now. Um, the, uh, and, and the the culprit, the big culprit in terms of what is causing the market to uh, just act a fool today has to do with the jobs numbers. Uh, the jobs numbers, they were expecting the jobs numbers to be really bad. Uh, they were expecting even more uh, unemployment than they had before. And instead of getting more unemployment, they got the opposite. They got the opposite. Um, they actually saw an increase in the number of jobs available uh, and a drop, a massive drop in the unemployment rate. Now, for black people, the unemployment rate uh, didn't change as much as it did for whites. And uh, that, that goes back to the point I've been making to you guys from the very beginning, that black people have to be responsible or find a way to uh, create jobs for black people. I'm not saying that white people don't owe you a job. I'm just saying that you can sit there and wait for them to deliver if you want to. But uh, I don't I don't trust other people to take care of my people. Um, I trust our people to take care of our people. Uh, so anyway, uh, what's up on Instagram? Hello on Instagram. My Instagram is The Real Voice Watkins. If you haven't, uh, follow me on Instagram. Or you can also follow the Black Financial Channel on Instagram. That's a great place to get daily financial news and commentary. So let me sort of break this down for you real quick. I spent time this morning analyzing the data and looking at what was going on. Uh, and um, I looked at my portfolio and I didn't believe it. I, I, I rolled over and I looked at Alicia and I said, I said, okay, so here's where we were yesterday and here's where we are now. Um, I don't understand how that happened. Like we're not supposed to make, like it's not supposed to grow that much in a day. And I said, well, what's the news? You know, news is the number one driver for stock market behavior, news and information, news and information. So I said, there's gotta be some news and information behind this. And uh, and that's when I read the information about what's going on with, uh, with the unemployment scenario. What appears to have been the case is that there's been a massive disconnect between what the economists thought was going on with businesses large and small, what they thought the employers were dealing with and going through and planning to do, versus what they were actually planning to do. Uh, you know, a lot, for example, a lot of economists thought uh, employers are gonna start laying more people off, more devastation's coming, consumers aren't buying anything, and they're finding it's the opposite. Even in, in, in industries that they thought were just gonna be dead for a while, like airlines, uh, cruise ships, they the, the cruise ship CEOs were coming in actually on CNBC. If you were reading the tea leaves, you might've seen a little bit of this coming. And they were saying, look, our bookings for next year are insane. Um, I know that I had a cruise planned uh, with Royal Caribbean uh, for my honeymoon. Uh, we were gonna get married in July, if you guys don't recall. We moved our date back to July of 2021. And uh, with Royal Caribbean, they did exactly what I thought they were gonna do. They weren't giving up our money. They weren't gonna give us a refund. They said, we'll give you a 125% credit toward a future cruise. So our desire to take a cruise didn't diminish. We didn't decide, hey, we'll never cruise again. What we decided was we want to cruise when it's safe. So we took the credit, as did hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other people. So these companies weren't necessarily losing a lot of revenue. They were It was delayed revenue, right? So uh, so here's what's, uh, what's being stated here. Um, and, uh, and, by, and, and also, if you're in the master class, I'm going to actually do a special lecture on some of this uh, sometime in the next few days. So uh, if you're not in the master class, you can actually join at drboysmasterclass.com. 
uh, this is where we break these things down and there's a private blog where you can put in all your questions I answer every single question in the private blog so it's dr. Boyce masterclass.com so here's what CNBC is saying they said non-farm payrolls rose by 2.5 million in May and the unemployment rate fell to 13.3 percent now 13.3 percent is an interesting number because that was about the black unemployment rate during the entire Obama presidency right so so what white folks consider to be a crisis we consider that to be you know business as usual right and and, and that's uh, and Eddie Cloud mentioned that you know while white unemployment dropped a lot during all of this black unemployment remained pretty flat but I've told you guys from the beginning what I believe I believe that black people that we have to be the job creators in our community I believe we need to start businesses we need to train our children to uh, make investments and to own assets um, I don't believe I'm sorry if you, if you think that white people are gonna come save us um, then I'm probably not your guy because I don't believe that that's going to happen at all um, and so here's what else is here um, it says Wall Street estimates have been uh, for a decline of 8.3 million so they thought that they were gonna lose another 8 million jobs and instead they gained 2.5 million jobs they're like what the heck whoa whoa and they thought that uh, that the amount of unemployment would be 19.5 percent which would have been the worst since the Great Depression much of the gain came from those classified as temporary layoffs due to the coronavirus uh, related economic shutdown so what apparently appears to be happening is employers are bringing back the employees that they had to let go because the entire economy was grinded to a halt what is also true is this you live in a country where there are two Americas now um, you have the Americas the, the America that uh, you know that really really you know doubled down tripled down on the coronavirus conversation and felt that the virus was going to kill everyone and that you shouldn't leave your house you shouldn't do anything until Dr. Fauci or the Trump administration or or the Democratic Party or your favorite politician says says it's safe then you have the other half of the country that said you know I'm not gonna sit around and wait for the politicians to tell me what to do I feel like it's safe I don't feel like it's that bad I'm gonna go start living life so uh, you know during the middle of all this me and my family I said to Alicia I said let's get out of here this doom and gloom I, this sadness it's, it's not fun for me let's go south let's let's just go you know to Florida uh, we visited my parents my parents are older so we social distance visit them you know we sat on the porch but they were sitting 10 feet away from us which was awkward as hell it was the weirdest thing in the world and uh, and then we came down to Florida and, and and in Florida I saw a whole different reality from what I saw in Illinois in Florida you would think that the corona thing never happened um, the economy is active stores are open people are living you, you'll see restaurant workers with masks on there are certain regulations in terms of how the opening is allowed to occur right like everything isn't open the way that it was before but a lot of things are open people are living the beaches are crowded etc and so that let me know that everybody doesn't see the same reality and they, and so so what they're really saying here the economists in my opinion is they're saying whoa you know there is consumer demand out here which is the driving force in the economy there are people ready to buy things and when there are people ready to buy things there are going to be businesses ready to sell things and so uh, leisure and hospitality represented almost half of the gains uh, they said uh, economists surveyed by Dow Jones had expected payrolls to drop by 8.3 million instead they rose by 2.5 million that is massive uh, so Scott Clemens chief investment strategist at Brown Brothers Harriman says it seems that the damage from the nationwide lockdown was not as severe or as lasting as we feared a month ago right now I believe that we have pretty much we should be celebrating because I believe that we have completely regained everything that was lost market wise during the corona scenario if you were a student in my class you understood from the very beginning go back and watch videos I did last week the week before last the week before last the week before last the week before last where I was telling so much truth that a lot of people were not comfortable with what I was saying a lot of people got mad at me but but I was just saying what I saw you know saying what I see and I was telling them I said look I'm not telling you guys what to do I'm not into that but I said I'm going to be buying if you were one of those people watching if they've been watching regularly say something in the chat so the people will know that that so you can confirm that that's what I was saying I was saying look I'm gonna buy 
I'm just gonna look for companies with strong balance sheets. I'm gonna look for companies that are gonna make it out of this. I'm gonna look for companies that are gonna benefit from the stay at home culture. I'm gonna look for companies that are good long-term investments because I believe this too shall pass. And I said the biggest test of this whole Corona scenario is gonna be whether or not we're talking about it two months from now, two months from now. Um, because I know internet culture. Internet culture says we're gonna be talking about something like crazy one week and then the next week we're talking about something else. It's totally something else. So the, the, honestly, the Corona scenario was intriguing to me and, and concerning to me because it didn't go away as fast as everything else, right? It didn't go away as fast as everything else. A lot of stuff goes away in a week. Corona didn't go away in a week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. And I saw media outlets doubling down and tripling down on their investment in the Corona story. They, the CNN created a whole podcast where all they did was talk about Corona. Uh, you know, NPR has a Corona podcast, if I'm not mistaken. So I thought, well, maybe there's something more here. But then as I looked at the numbers, looked at the data, did my research, I said, I still think this is going to go away. And so lo and behold, what eventually occurred is you saw that the uh, that that as the numbers dwindled, you started seeing people questioning things, challenging things. Not that they were right, but they were questioning things. And then you also saw uh, that the economic data that was predicted to be so terribly bad wasn't as bad as people thought. And then the big kicker, the big kicker, the big, you know, the big economic driver that changed it all, the big game changer was George Floyd. Um, once the nation shifted its attention to the George Floyd situation, I was astonished by how little people were talking about Corona at that point. They like 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 I was really kind of like I was like okay that's the ultimate test you know it's like um it's like when I test uh you know when 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 one of my kids tells me they want something um I I sometimes I'll test and I'll say okay well if you want this then you can't have that right and and if they if they're not willing to give up that in order to have this that tells me that makes me say I I that means you didn't really want it as bad as you said you wanted it right you, that means that you're easily distracted so the fact that the nation was so easily distracted from corona due to you know the protests and everything else that told me that whoever was be, you know behind sort of the conversations on this narrative they weren't really invested in that particular narrative right because if it were truly dangerous like let's say that it, instead of corona it had been ebola if, if, if we were dealing with an Ebola crisis, I don't think that George Floyd protests would have distracted us from an Ebola crisis, right? I just don't. I, just, I think we would have said, you know, I want to protest, but I'm going to protest from home with my Twitter account because I don't want to go out in the crowd and catch Ebola, right? But, uh, but you know, but with this, it was, it was kind of one of those things where people knew deep down, like, you know, okay, wait, there's a 1 in 300, 400, 1 in 400 chance of me even catching it. If I catch it, there's only a 1 in, you know, four, 1 in 200 chance of me actually dying from it. And that's if I'm a 70-year-old man, right? And, and, and that doesn't mean it's not real. It just means that it's not as scary as people think. So, uh, you know, and in fact, actually, uh, George Floyd actually had corona when he died. And, and he was fine. He was walking around doing whatever. And, and then now, I guess the cops probably have it, too. And none of the cops are dead, right? I'm sure if the cops died, people would be, you know, applauding that because they, they're pretty mad at these people, which they should be. I, I'm mad at them, too. But, you know, I, I, I so, so long story short, I think that what, you know, the moral of all of this, in my opinion, is that when it comes to information which drives wealth in this country you gotta know how to really research things for yourself there are a lot of people that are going to lie to you that are going to maybe exaggerate things so I mean, the, the way a conspiracy theory works is you take a little bit of truth and you blow it up you know like if I say well you know one plus one is two and you say yeah, I agree. One plus one is two. And then I say, yeah, but and then also, if you look at the nature of the number two, you notice that it's curved, which means that the letter, the number two is curved similar to space time. And so if you have space time curvature, then that means that time travel is possible. And if time travel is possible, that means that Donald Trump is really uh, from the future, which also means that, you know, and if Donald Trump is from the future, then that means that, you know, that really we're all living in a matrix, right? Like, like I could take of a, a fact and stretch that into something bigger and if you believe that fundamental fact you could be tempted to believe everything else connected to it so the fundamental fact was that we had a virus that has killed people 
the virus was in the United States. Um, the virus was something that you did not want to catch. But where the stretch came was in terms of the interpretation of how deadly it was. The stretch came in terms of interpreting what, how, how we should respond as a country. The stretch came when people were saying we need to shut down the entire economy and give up 38 million jobs in order to deal with this issue. And, and, and that's the problem in, in the sense that um, that is when I started picking up on the fact that it was political, especially when I saw that the Democrats all wanted to keep everything shut down and the Republicans wanted everything to open up. Um, you know, that told me, OK, I get it now. You're you're you want you want Trump out of office. Fine. Uh, so you're taking away his strength. You want to take away his um, the, his bragging point, which is the strength of the economy, which unfortunately, I think it might have backfired because now if you go to Twitter, Trump is bragging about how the stock market has just had a, a historic month. It's literally had arguably the best 30 to 60 days in American history. So he now he's still got something to brag about, right? Because, you know, in, in this, but this putting Trump to the side and I'm talking about politics. This really is a, is a lesson in terms of investing. Um, never think that because there is a crash or a downturn that everybody's losing. Uh, you know, the Great Depression was not a time. I know you might have heard this, but it was not a time that everybody got killed. Everybody lost everything. The Great Depression was a time where there was a wealth transfer. The Great Depression was a time where people who invested and, and remained consistent were able to make a tremendous amount of money during the rise back up. So right now, what you're seeing is you're seeing a massive wealth transfer. Uh, you, you saw a scenario where trillions of dollars in wealth was lost uh, through dead businesses and, and dead stocks. And as those stocks were sold, they were sold to people who had a longer term, more patient uh, disposition on investing. I'm a long-term investor. And when, I, and when you're thinking 10 years into the future, you're not thinking about what's gonna happen next week. I said, you know, I don't care what happens next week, to be honest with you. I'll talk about it, but I don't really care because I'm going to hold a lot of these stocks until the year 2030 or the year 2040. So so when you're thinking that way, that means that even if you have a great dip, even if things go bad, you're likely going to have the recovery. What's interesting about this now, and I'm going to say it's beautiful because I, I, all y'all in here who are making money, I'm so, so happy for you. Um, the beautiful thing about all of this is that the recovery occurred a lot faster than we thought. A lot of people thought we'd have to wait six months, maybe a year to reach back to old levels. The average bear market, the average drop, uh, prolonged drop in the stock market lasts about 14 months. It takes usually about 14 months to get back to your old levels that you were at before the bear market happened. This took a couple of months. You know, it, it, it's like it's like there was a drastic drop because everybody really, you know, really thought, for example, that we were that two million people were gonna die. And then when they realized it was only 100,000, that's when you started seeing the trickle back up. And then when people realized it wasn't nearly as bad as they thought and, and the whole country was talking about something else, that's when you suddenly see everything go right back to where it was before. So um, so, so at the end of the day, what I would say to you is, um, you know, pay attention to the politics, right? It's fine. Some of these issues are important. They matter to all of us. Um, but pay more attention to your family. Pay more attention to your future. Pay more attention to... Uh, where you're going to be 10 years from now than worrying about where you're going to be 10 days from now, okay? Um, because that's what smart people do, and that's why certain people can get ahead because there is a tremendous amount of manipulation occurring in, the con in this country and in this world. Don't be one of the people being manipulated. If you're going to be manipulated, manipulate yourself, you know, seriously. If you're going to be driven to a certain direction, dr at least drive yourself. I I'll respect a bad decision that you made more than I respect a, a mediocre decision that somebody else made, okay? So um, last but not least, I'm going to get out of here. If you haven't learned to buy your first share of stock, you can learn for free at firstshareofstock.com. That's firstshareofstock.com. Uh, if you've already bought your first share of stock and you want to go deeper, uh, we, we do a lot of great things in the masterclass. All the recordings are available. It's really, really good. Feel free to check it out. It's drboycemasterclass.com. That's drboycemasterclass.com. Make sure you subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, it was good talking to you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you soon. And if you're making money, then I applaud you. I'm happy for you. Uh, these are one of the good days. So just know the rain is coming. The bad days are coming, but today's a good day. So take some time and rejoice and, and enjoy that money. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Love you guys. Peace.
Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boy's TV. Here we are.